everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you as always for being here. Appreciate you coming on by, just stopping in. Thank you so much for being here. We're gonna continue on listening to Suede. We're moving on into the next track where we had left off. That is going to be She's Not Dead. Hope, hope not. Uh, of course, off of their album, Suede, uh, which was released in 19, did I say 93? I didn't see the year. Let me, let me get it again, 93. Just, just got to make sure sometimes. You know what I was thinking about? I was looking at the album cover, right? And I was looking at the, the two people kissing there. And maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me. But for some reason, it looks really uncomfortable. It looked like, like, it's like, just like that. And maybe it's just where my mind goes. But I just can't help but think like, y'all are hitting teeth. Y'all, I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe not. But it, it, I just can't get that in my out of my mind like, they're hitting teeth, and that cannot be comfortable. Anyway, <laughs> I don't know why that came into my mind. Like, anyways, let's go ahead and listen to the song. We will talk about it after. Here we go, guys. <laughs> Make sure my volume's right. Perfect. Matches his high falsetto very nicely. higher whispery tone. guitar playing in this. Kind of leaving 
the way it came in, actually. Do you guys think that She's Not Dead is a very windy song? It sounds really, really windy to me. Did I say wheelie? Oh God, don't don't back this up five seconds. Don't back this up five seconds. It sounds really windy to me. Uh, of course, I would say definitely because of the guitar, which is just playing this windswept, foggy, airy, ethereal, if you want to go that direction, kind of just like floating. It's just like, you know when you see... <laughs> This is a weird analogy. You know when you see stuff like just in the in the like air, just like floating, like a little dust, a little hair, a little whatever, just like floating. It kind of has that ethereal feeling where it's just like floating. The guitar playing from Butler is just very floaty, and then helped by his singing, especially when he kind of dives into the <clears throat> into the like his voice kind of floats with it, and then. It sounds like there's a turn of organ or a turn of keyboard underneath it all. Um, who was doing that? I forgot his name. Uh, Ed Buller. It, or Bueller. Uh, it sounds like maybe there's like just a little bit of keyboard underneath it a little bit. That gives a little bit of rise to that, that particular feeling. But I think that that's really, really nice. And then the bass playing is also kind of high. Everything's kind of high. Like pitch-wise or keys, whatever. Like it's all up here. But then occasionally, I would say because of the bass, it kind of dips down. And then you have the drums, which just kind of roll in, just kind of tumble in a little bit, kind of giving a little bit of that movement to everything, kind of pushing, like a gentle breeze, pushing those melodies along. I think that's really nice, and I think that this is a really nice kind of light effort after the previous two tracks. I think this kind of softens things up, uh, perhaps before some sort of blow. Sticking with the wind analogies, blow. I don't know if you... She'll come to her end, locked in a car somewhere, with exhaust in her hair. What she called, I don't know. She's with a slip of a man while the engine ran. Okay, so she's not dead. Well, they're talking about someone meeting their end. When I see the lines locked in a car, exhaust in her hair, engine running, I'm thinking they took themselves out by running the car in an enclosed area. He says she's not dead. She's gone away, gone away, he said. She's not dead, just go away, go away. So perhaps this is someone dealing with a loss and a loss perhaps of those circumstances where, you know, someone's in denial basically like, no, she's not dead, she's not dead. And then maybe the realization slowly comes to them and they're getting angry and they say, go away. So it's that that denial turning to anger, turning to like, just get away from me. Like, you know, I, I think that's kind of the emotion we're getting here. In the car he couldn't afford, they found his made up name on her ankle chain, so don't call, don't call her at home. She's with the slip of a man while the engine ran, and then the lyrics repeat from there. So that's what I think it's about. And perhaps with the lines, you know, a car he couldn't afford found his made up name. Uh, it doesn't sound like the best of circumstances. I mean, the event is not the best of circumstances, but like, it sounds like the situation was dire all around. So this is, that's, a, that's interesting. And now I actually wasn't paying attention to the lyrics at all while listening, but now like putting them both together, it, it does add a little bit of weight to that floaty sound that I was mentioning before. A lyrical weight to that, that airy melody. That's good. That's a good juxtaposition and contrast of lyrics and music. I like that. Let me know what you guys thought, though. Why did I do like this? In the comments below. You can follow me over on Twitter. You can support the channel on Patreon. Thank you so much for being here. Hope you have a lovely rest of your day. I'll see you guys later. Bye.